Hey, what is going on guys? DK. Back at you with another video here to bring the two game NBA main slate on Sunday. Before I get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL slates on DraftKings and I also make videos for NBA Top Shot. If you are unable to watch these videos, they also upload on Apple Podcasts. Link down below, it's called the DK DFS Show. And if you could take a minute out of your day, leave a five star rating interview, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. If you are interested in signing up for premium content, I offer that on patreon.com. I offer an NBA package as well as an esports package. Now, in the esports package, it includes Call of Duty slates and CSGO slates. We get CSGO slates every single day, Call of Duty slates usually four times a week, Thursday through Sunday. And finally, I want to thank Prize Picks for sponsoring this episode. If this is your first time watching my videos or you're just not familiar with Prize Picks, so uh, they have a couple different ways you can play. Uh, one way is they have, you know, you take over, under, and fantasy scores. So um, they will post players and, you know, their projected fantasy scores, and you can, again, take over or under. So, like, for example, Trey Young, 46 fantasy points, do it at the under, do it at the over there. So let's see. They have a good amount of players posted already, and I was scrolling through these, and I'm like, these seem pretty sharp um i will say you know the Embiid, the Embiid news for philly is pretty big if you are confident that Joel Embiid plays then i think i like taking the under and ben simmons and tobias Harris. but everything that i've seen i would guess he is more on the doubtful side so with that being said like 45 seems like about right for those two now um, I am curious uh, about you know Philly and what they do with the starting lineup because Atlanta has a big front court of Capella and John Collins. Like, can they really afford to go Ben Simmons to the five or like a Mike Scott? Maybe this is a game Dwight Howard starts. If he does, like, I think maybe you take the over there. Um, if he doesn't start, then we might only get like fifteen to twenty minutes out of Dwight Howard. Then that becomes riskier. So, and that's one kind of depending on the starting lineup. Yeah, like these, again, they, they seem pretty sharp. Korkmaz, again, he's kind of been fringe in now the rotation. Maybe take the under there. But, yeah, everything else, again, this this game I'm super excited about, game seven. Um, it seems it seems pretty sharp. There's not a ton that really stands out. Uh, but they also offer, again, single stat DFS. So, like, you can take over, under on points. So, like, over, under on 15 and a half real-life points for Ben Simmons. Or, you know, over under eight assists for Ben Simmons. They also have rebounds, three-pointers made. So a, a lot of different ways they can play. And, they, again, they have a lot of stuff posted for these. So um, if you guys want to try it out, you can sign up. Use the code DKDFS. DKDFS, all one word, link down below. You would 100% match up to $100. Basically a free $100 if you, put, if you deposit $100 using my code. Um, and finally, I just got to thank you guys for all of your support. Again, the support last couple days especially have been overwhelming. So really, really, uh, again, cannot thank you guys enough for everything. Um, if you guys do enjoy all this content, if you could leave a like button on the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload videos, you know when I go live. We have an early slate tomorrow, early, which is weird. But I will be live uh, noon central lock. So YouTube, I'll be live at 11 a.m. central. Make sure to check it out, guys. I'll you know break down the slate, go over you know injury news, and then answer any questions you have. All right, so before we talk about players and the prices for this two-game slate, we can look back my lineup here from the showdown slate on Saturday. So uh, I did end up cashing. I played a couple of the just the lower stakes tournaments. Like, I never go crazy in these showdown um, slates. I definitely play less because there's – even more variance involved when it's just one game. But, you know, I went with the superstars and scrubs build, and I really wanted to get Giannis in the captain, so I had to sacrifice my two value plays. But, yeah, um, you know, even though the Bucks lost, which is not good for me with uh, taking the Bucks winning at all, um, unfortunate for, for the Nets, so Harden went down with that looks he aggravated that hamstring injury. And with hamstrings, the bad thing is those usually take a while to heal, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. But, um, yeah, Katie and Kyrie played really well. Uh, I paired him with, again, Giannis and Drew. So I went with a, a complete Stars and Scrubs build. I, I used Shamit because he was the only one really at that price that was viable. And then I rolled the dice in DeAndre Jordan. I knew there's a chance he would get a DNP. He did get a DNP. So, um, again, it was a risk I was willing to take. But still, all in all, it was a good night for me, even with a couple of close to zeros with those value plays because I want that Stars and Scrubs build. But, all right, so let's take a look at this two-game slate. We have the Hawks and the 76ers. It's a 220 and a half over under. 76ers are three-point favorites. Now, those Vegas odds lead me to believe that Embiid will not be playing, right? If Embiid was playing, I would think Philly would be favored by maybe six, seven points. They're only three-point favorites at home. 
So my guess is he doesn't play. And then game seven, Mavs, Clippers. Oh man, I am so pumped for this one. Only a 210 over under. Uh, the Clippers are six point favorites. So we'll start off with the Atlanta side. Again, tougher matchup here against the 76ers. Uh, Trey Young at 9.2K is just a guy that's going to play, you know, 35 to 40 minutes. Um, and is, again, their clear number one guy. He went for 36, 9, and 4 the last game. And we saw that game didn't go over to overtime. And we saw 41 minutes from Trey, which is, again, the most we saw all series long. So, I mean, at least we know now that is in the realm of possibilities of him playing that many minutes. And um, if we get close to 40 minutes, even with his matchup, I think Trey is a little bit too cheap. Now, the issue is we do have other stars that may look a little bit better in, in better matchups. So with all that being said, I think Trey is a good GPP spend up. I think the ownership is not going to be as high because of the matchup. But hey, he still had, he had a tough matchup last series and he still put up 40 plus fancy points every single game, right? So even with the tough matchup, we still have a good game. And this is, again, Tough matchup, but we, we might get we might get close to 40 minutes from Trey Young. So um, I do like him at the top. I think he's, though, more of a GPP play. Now, with Clint Capella at 7-7, this depends on the health of Joel Embiid. If Joel Embiid is, in fact, out, I don't hate going to Capella as a contrarian play. The issue is that series against the Knicks, he really didn't have a ton of optics. The last game was his best game in 40 fancy points. Other than that, he was hovering in, like, the low 30s fancy points which is not going to get it done at 7-7 but again if there's no if there's no Embiid and they start like an undersized Mike Scott or they try to start Ben Simmons at the five but Capella should be able to eat on the glass so keep an eye on that starting lineup I think if if Embiid is out and they go small I think Capella is at least worth a look again though not really an optimal play not someone I'm looking to go to with a lot of confidence it just he, he becomes more viable if Philly starts a small ball lineup with Bogdan Madonovich, he's kind of just a secondary play. Um, he's gone for him. Mean, he's been really consistent. He was really consistent in that series. 31, 35, 32, 36, 31. So, like, he didn't have a ton of upside, but he kind of had a decently high floor. A guy that, you know, can do it all. He'll have the ball in his hands uh, when Trey Young's not on the court. He should play, you know, 35-ish minutes. I think he's just, again, fair secondary play. A filler option. If he's your last piece in, sure. But I'm not going to go out of my way to play him. You know, the price did dip on John Collins to below 6K, but still, it's like, hmm, do I want to pay 5-9 for John Collins here against Philly? Again, not super uh, super excited to do that. Now, DeAndre Hunter's at 4.4K. He is currently questionable. My guess is he plays is the knee soreness. I mean, he is really, he's a good defender, but he has taken a back seat offensively in the playoffs, for sure. So, Again, uh, you know, the minutes will be there, but he does have a pretty low floor, right? He was very popular two games ago in New York and went for eight fancy points. So, like, there is some risk, uh, again, just the low usage. But uh, at least with DeAndre Hunter, if he does play, he should play over 30 minutes. That is the positive. Now, with Gallinari, I actually kind of like him for tournaments as a value play. He had a really bad shooting game last game, only went for five fancy points. But, like, he can still go out and get you 20-plus. We saw 30 two games ago. You know, a, street, a streaky shooter, but again, if he's hitting his threes, he can have some upside. If he plays well, they might extend him a little bit. So uh, I think Gallinari is a decent tournament play. Kevin Herter, 4K. I think we get about 20 minutes from him. You could do worse, but like, am I going to prioritize Kevin Herter? No, I would say kind of the same thing. Um, you know, I got about a guy like Bogdan. I know they're different prices, but like he's kind of just a filler option. Last piece in, sure, but... I'm not going to be like, oh, make my lineup first guy in Kevin Herter. No, that's not, not, not how it's going to go. Um, Lou Williams at 3-2. We'll play the backup point and play about 10 minutes. I just don't think it's necessary in this slate. I mean, you need some weird stuff to happen. You need Trey Young foul trouble or like him to roll an ankle or something for Lou Williams to become viable. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm at for the, for the Hawks. So one of the 76ers. So, so I hinted it. Again, I do not believe in bead plays. Um, he, so what was to say? He went. He wasn't able to participate in live action during Saturday's practice. I don't think he goes. Um, so if he does play, if Joel Embiid does play and there's no limit, I love him. But I, I just don't expect him to play. So, um, yeah. With that being said, though, with Embiid most likely out, I'll say, Tobias Harris and Ben Simmons get a pretty big boost. Now, we're no longer getting them super cheap, but still, 8-5 for Tobias Harris 
and 8.3K for Ben Simmons is too cheap if this game stays competitive. If we see 40 minutes from Ben Simmons and like 35 plus from Tobias Harris, and these are the clear number one and number two guys in offense, it's a solid matchup against Atlanta. So Tobias, Ben Simmons, I think are both really solid plays if Joel Embiid is not able to go. Value-wise, Seth Curry at 5-1 had a really good shooting game last game. I think we get about 30 minutes from him. The downside of Seth Curry is the floor is somewhat low if he's not hitting a shot. So if he's having a bad shooting game or he's just not shooting the ball a ton, the floor is low because he's not going to do a ton of the peripheral stats. And the price is now over 5K. So that being said, I think Seth Curry, Seth Curry more of a tournament play. And the same thing with Danny Green, right? He's close to 5K. He'll play similar minutes, about 30. Again, super reliant on the scoring. So there is some risk. So um, both guys, I mean, you could you can go to them in cash games, but just know the floor is is low if, if they're not hitting their shots. So Seth Curry and Danny Green, again, it's, it's like that Spider-Man Jeff, right? They're pretty much, I mean, they're not the same player, but they do the same things, right? They're just super reliant on the three-point shot to get fantasy value. Now, Dwight Howard, this depends on the starting lineup, right? Atlanta's a big team. I think there's a chance Dwight starts if Embiid is out. If Dwight starts, love him for value because he's a really good point per minute guy. He was basically a two fancy point per minute guy the last game with Washington. Uh, now, again, I'm not expecting two fancy points per minute from Dwight Howard, but if he starts, I think we probably get about 25 minutes or so. And with that being said, that would be too cheap a price for Dwight Howard. Now, if he comes off the bench, there's a little bit more, little bit more risk because there's a chance he only plays like 15-ish minutes. Again, though, can they go super small or more small ball against this big Hawks front court? I'm not sure if they can. So I think this is a game that if Embiid is out, Dwight might have to play a little bit more. So definitely eyeing Dwight Howard, especially if he starts. It becomes a really, really good value. Now, Maxi has played... Um, Phenomenal. He really has. Last two games on the bench, 22, 26 minutes, 23 and 25 faints points. He's a good scorer. He's kind of a do-it-all guy. They kind of need his his uh, boost off the bench. And I think he's going to be a regular part of this rotation. Again, he has really, really played well. So I'm assuming we get around 20 minutes from Tyrese Maxey. With that being said, I like him a good amount here for value. I think he is, uh, again, a really solid value play at that price. Now, with the emergence of Tyrese Maxey, George Hill kind of taking a backseat a little bit. Not completely out of play, but I think if I'm spending down for one of these Philly guards, I would rather have Maxey. Mike Scott, I think there's a chance he starts the five. Right, We've seen that uh, with games with the beat out. They've, they've wanted to start Mike Scott at the five. Besides the last game, they started Ben Simmons at the five. So monitor that. If he starts, we probably get about 15 to 20 minutes. But with Scott, he's a super, super low usage guy. Thibault started last game. Again, though, only 16 minutes. I think we get somewhere around 20 minutes from him if he starts again. The issue is he's really just out there for his defense. That's that's it. Um, and then Korkmaz, 3-1. Again, played a little bit. Super reliant to scoring. Not something I feel amazing about. And Milton might play a little bit too, but again, it's not something that I really want to go to either. So Philly, you know, they'll probably use a pretty deep bench, but really my, my main focus is, you know, the, the main guys, the main, I guess the starting five, and then, you know, a guy like Dwight and Maxi off the bench. Uh, so let's finish up with Dallas and the Clippers. Game seven here. The road team has won every single game this, this series, which is just insane. So Luka Doncic at 11.1K. I think if I'm spending up for anyone, it's going to be Luka. And it's just because he is their offense, right? Poor Zingas just being a shell of his former self with no one else really stepping up for the Mavs. This offense is Get the ball to Luca, and he's got to be more aggressive. He he didn't. He was a little bit passive that last game. He's got to be more aggressive in the offensive end of this game. Um, again, he's questionable, full expectation to play. So I like Luca a lot. He's my favorite spend up on this slate. Again, it's it's crazy, but six point seven k for Porzingis. I have no interest. I I don't. I, I literally. He is just th- this. He's just standing in the corner. There's no offense being run through him. I have no interest. No interest. Tim Hardaway Jr. at 6'4". has actually been their second best player in this series. The issue with him doesn't do anything in the peripheral stats. So if he's having a bad shooting game, the floor is super, super low. And he's now at 6'4". So this is one where it's like, okay, if you play Tim Hardaway Jr. and he's a bad shooting game and goes for 15 fantasy points, just shovel your money in the fire. You're done. You're done. So... 
yeah, that is the issue with Tim Hardaway. I think he's still fine for tournaments, but I'm not touching him in a cash game setting. Dorian Finney-Smith at 5K. I mean, he's played huge minutes. 40, 42. I think we get about 40 minutes from him. Fine option. Again, not a great offensive player, but can fall into some peripheral stats. Maxi Kleber, 4K, has really lost minutes the last couple of games. I have zero interest unless he starts, but I'm assuming to go right back to Boban. And, um, yeah, with that being said, if Boban starts, I think he's one of the better value players on the board. The reason being is Boban is a great point-per-minute guy, and I, I think if he starts, we get about 15-ish minutes from him. So, really like Boban if they continue to start him. Jalen Brunson at 3.8K. Been hovering around, you know, 15-ish minutes off the bench. With Carlisle, it's really hard to trust the bench rotation. It is because it's been so inconsistent on a night-to-night basis. So, not completely out of play, but definitely high-risk, high-reward. Then Josh Richardson, the minutes have been down on him, 6, 9. So it's, like, hard to get confident there. With the other bigs, you know, Dwight Powell two games ago played really well. And, again, put the clown play face up. Uh, the clown face, the clown paint on me for trusting Rick Car- Carlisle that he'd go back to Powell because he didn't. He only played seven minutes. Now, what I saw was when Zubac was out there, like Powell came out, and then once Zubac subbed out, like they took him out early in the fourth quarter, Powell subbed out and they went to Cauley Stein. So it seems like if they, if both, if the Clippers go small or like have you know keep that small ball line without Zubac, then um, it's going to be that they're going to want to go to Cauley Stein over Powell. So. If you think this is a game where Zubac plays more, then maybe you can take a shot on Paul. But it's hard to feel confident with Zubac barely playing as well. And then with that being said, really Carly Stein, again, he played a little bit more last game. I'm just saying, be careful, right? You just never know what Carlisle is going to do. You never know. It could be Paul this game. It could. Uh, I will just say he played 19 minutes the last game. So if you want to get super super risky and take a shot, I'm not going to talk you off it. It's just I mean, there's, there's a chance he barely plays. All right, so finishing up with the Clippers. Quiet Leonard, Paul George. Quiet 9-9, Paul George at 9K. I think point per dollar might have a slight preference to Paul George, but Kawhi, I think, is just a little bit safer. It, it was weird because two games ago, they doubled Kawhi Leonard, like, every time he touched it. That last game, they barely doubled him at all, and he went off. So it's like, are they going to go back to doubling him? I'm not sure because if it worked two games ago. It did. So I'm really curious. I'm really curious as to why Dallas didn't double Kawhi that last game when it worked two games ago. So if they do double Kawhi Leonard, then again, then you know probably Paul George is going to look better. So it's really I'm 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 just curious as to why Dallas didn't double him a lot last game. So um, with with all that being said, again, obviously I have interest in both Clippers guys. It really depends on how Dallas is going to play defensively. Um, if if they play it, you know, no double teams at all. I think Kawhi is slightly safer. I think he's a little bit of higher floor. And point per dollar though might have a slight preference to Paul George. And if they do start doubling Kawhi Leonard again, then Paul George probably does get that boost. All right, so Reggie Jackson had a really big game last game. Be careful here though. He had a really good shooting game. Definitely an outlier performance. Nine rebounds to. Four assists and 25 real life points. We are most likely not going to see that again from Reggie Jackson. But I do think we get around 30 minutes from him as long as he doesn't play terrible. And he is a decent scorer. So, and, and he, he's been basically their third best scorer so far this series. Uh, and again, 30 ish minutes, 5 4. I think that makes him a fair play in the mid range. I do. He's been pretty consistent so far this series in the big game last game. Now, Marcus Morris is also going to play massive minutes. He shot one up ten last game. So what is that going to do for this for today or for tomorrow's slate? That's going to lower the ownership on him, right? Recency bias is going to be low owned. But just take a look two games ago when he had a decent shooting game well, for thirty seven fancy points. So yeah, I think Marcus Morris is a fair play. You know, a safer option because of the minutes, and we most likely won't get a one of ten shooting game again from him. And then Nick Batum, I also think is pretty safe, right? These, these secondary plays for the Clippers, they're running a really tight rotation. All these guys playing big minutes. We should get about 35 from, from Batum, a guy that can hit some threes, get some rebounds, you know, block some shots. I think Batum, Marcus Morris are safer value plays at their respective prices. Now, Rondo is definitely the riskier play. Minutes have been trending down. Only played 10 minutes last game after, you know, hovering around 20 earlier in the series. He's the guy that, you know, can kind of stuff the stat sheet, but... Not good that the mints are trending down. So right now, nothing more than a contrarian play in larger field stuff. Ibaka, doubtful. Don't expect him to play. Again, Zubach, so tilted from that show. It's like, because he was playing, you know, around 20 minutes so far in the series and then just comes out and plays five minutes. <laughs> so it doesn't look like, unless they change some things, 
Um, doesn't look like he's going to play a ton. You never know. He could co come back and play 15 and 20 minutes. Then it'll be very tilted if he does. Uh, but yeah, looks like the Clippers just want to stick to that small ball and they don't want to play Zubac a ton. And then finally, Terrence Mann at 3-4, I think hovers around 10 to 15 minutes on the bench. Um, again, just a large field dart throw really in tournaments. So that is going to do it for the video today, guys. If you have been enjoying the content so far, I would really appreciate if you have a like button on the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't want to upload videos you don't want to go live. Again, I will be live tomorrow early. So grab your coffee, come check on the live stream early, 11 a.m. Central to break down the two-game slate and answer any questions you guys have. Thanks again. Have a great night, guys, and I'll see you all tomorrow early in the live stream.